Daisy, 006 and a Bet, by Cass Gray and Nick Sherratt. Daisy had made up her mind. She wasn't going to be a girl anymore. She was going to be a spy. She had drawn a spy's mustache on her top lip with a black felt tip pen. She had found some dark glasses in a drawer. She had found some secret spy gadgets in her mom's bedroom. All she had to do now was speak in code. Code is a special spy language that only spies understand. Daisy had seen it used in spy films. Now, this time, it was for real. Daisy frowned mysteriously and crept unseen into the kitchen. Hello, Daisy, said Mom. What do you want for tea tonight? The ostriches will be swimming in tomato sauce this evening, said Daisy. Which, as any spy knows, means a big portion of chicken nuggets and lots of ketchup, please. Daisy's mom stared at Daisy and scratched her head. Why are you speaking in silly words? asked Daisy's mom. They are not silly words, whispered Daisy mysteriously. It's secret spy language, and my name isn't Daisy anymore. It's double six and a bit. And what are you intending to do with my hairbrush double six and a bit? asked Daisy's mom. It's not a hairbrush. It's my secret spy telephone, said Daisy. And where are you going with my perfume bottle? asked Daisy's mom. It's not your perfume bottle, said Daisy. It's my invisible ink. And would I be wrong in thinking that is my hair dryer? said Daisy's mom. Yes, whispered Daisy. It's not a hair dryer. It's my secret Betty Zapper. Daisy's mom shook her head and went to find the ironing board. Double six and a bed slipped invisibly into the back garden. Hello, Daisy, said her neighbor. How are you today? Good afternoon, Agent Goldfish, said Daisy. Are your fins green or purple today? Which, as any spy knows, means I'm fine, thanks, Mrs. Pike. How are you? Mrs. Pike stared strangely at Daisy and went to mow her grass. Daisy slipped invisibly across the garden and went to give an important message to Mrs. Pike's cat. Meet me by the Golden Palace, she whispered, and bring your furry overcoat. Which, as any spy knows, means, Hello, Tiptoes, why don't you come and sit by the shed? I want to stroke you. Tiptoes took one look at Daisy's hair dryer and skedaddled over the wall. Daisy dabbed on some more invisible ink and peeped out of the garden gate. No one will be able to see me now, she smiled. Hello, Daisy, said her best friend Gabby. Can you come out to play? The laundry basket is full, and the big beaver, busy beaver has many clothes to fold, Daisy said. Which, as any spy knows, means, Hi, Gabby, I'll just ask my mom. She's doing the ironing. But Gabby gave Daisy a very strange look and went to find someone else to play with. Daisy took off her glasses and walked miserably back indoors. What's the matter, double six and a bit? asked her mom. Aren't you playing spies anymore? No, I'm not, sighed Daisy. No one understands my spy language. They just look at me as though I'm silly. Daisy's mom stopped ironing and put her arm around Daisy's shoulders. That must be because they are not real spies, whispered Daisy's mom. If they were, they would understand everything you are saying. Daisy trudged into the living room and slumped onto the sofa. Well, they don't understand what I'm saying. There aren't any real spies around here. No one understands me and I'm not being a spy anymore. Being a spy is stupid, she grumbled. Daisy was just about to turn on the TV when a mysterious looking stranger with a purple mustache and beard poked his head around the door. He had dark glasses on, just like Daisy. Psst, 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 whispered the stranger in a deep, mysterious voice. Have you seen 006 and a bit anywhere? Daisy stared back at the stranger in surprise. 
She put her dark glasses on again quickly and sat up straight. Yes, I have seen Double O Six and a bet. She nodded. That's me. I'm Double O Six and a bet. That is good news," whispered the stranger. "Because my name is Double O Twenty One and a bit. I am a real spy too. The colored sprinkles will be meeting with a chocolate flake on the vanilla ice cream at tea time," whispered Double O Twenty One and a bit. And the crunchy cream biscuits and lemonade will be meeting under the big yellow duvet when the clock strikes twelve," continued the mysterious stranger. Double O Six and a bit frowned for a moment and clapped her hands excitedly. Oh, goody! I know what that means. We're having my favorite pudding for tea and then a midnight feast in your bed tonight. I'll bring my comic and my torch too, which, as anybody knows, means thanks, Mom. You're the best spy in the world. Here comes trouble. Daisy is on a mission to be the best spy in the world. She's found the dark glasses that she needs. She's found the spy gadgets, but can she find anyone who understands her secret spy code? A war-winning duel, Cass Gray and Nick Charette are on top form by ta- by Daily Telegraph.